Hello and welcome to the 2024 Baking Challenge. I want you to take a deep breath and try not to stress out because for week 21, we're making pasta. Specifically, we're making cheese ravioli. And I know that that sounds incredibly intimidating. It kind of does to me too. I've never made pasta before. I have seen it done in real life one time, but it's time. We've come 20 weeks down in this challenge. It's time to really tackle something that is incredibly outside the comfort zone that we have made for ourselves. So we're gonna get through this together, okay? Grab your ingredients and let's bake. Okay, are you done panicking? Cause I'm done panicking. Now, the recipe calls for a food processor to mix the dough. I don't have a traditional food processor. I have this Ninja, so that's what I'm gonna use. If you don't have a food processor, you can try your mixer, you can try a blender. You can get in there and do this by hand, although it's gonna be a little more time consuming for you, okay? Don't panic, we can do this. All right, to start off with, um, I need to figure out how this works. Probably not that. Sure, right? No. See if Scott were in here, he could tell me what I need for this because I am kind of at a loss here. I wonder if this is the blade that I need. No, see, I don't know how this works. Does this go all the way? No. Does this need to be? No. Ha <laughs> ha There we go. I think. Um. There's a lot of moving parts to this, and I don't understand it. So that's what I think I need. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that this works. Okay. Two cups all-purpose flour. That's easy. See? We're starting off so easy. As always, I have my half a cup. So I'm going to do this four times. You can measure your flour. That's probably the better way to do this. Um, uh, if you're not measuring, you should at least be leveling it off. That's why my recipes never quite turn out right because I cut corners I shouldn't cut. Okay, that is two cups of flour. You are going to need a half a teaspoon of regular table salt. Ooh, it just got really dark. I can get my rain. It's not supposed to. Okay. And then you're going to pulse this to mix all of that up. It's going to be loud. I guess I should turn. Do I have it plugged in? Yes, I do. Look at me go. Okay. Now, three eggs. Your eggs should be at room temperature, and I promise you I'm not winking at you. I just have something in my eye. It's really weird. Um, okay, three eggs, room temperature. You're adding them one at a time, okay? Just like we've done with several recipes now, you want one egg at a time, and you want to incorporate that all before you add the next egg, okay? So... dough setting. That's what I'm using. I don't know if I'm doing that correctly or not. Um, next egg. Okay. And try this on the dough setting again. like it's turning into a like pebbles it's not really doing much so <laughs> I'm sure it said two cups of flour and three eggs and salt It says 
add the eggs one at a time. Incorporate fully before adding the next. Once the last egg is in, continue processing until the mixture comes together in a large clump with just a few loose bits. Mine is not there yet, so um, keep going. Okay, my dough is not coming together. Um, so I'm gonna, I added just a few drops of water. I thought about adding a whole nother egg, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, when I get a major of a spoon down in here, I pulled the, the blades out. Um, it is starting to come together a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next step, which is to turn this out on a work surface, a clean work surface and start kneading it by hand. If it doesn't come together, then maybe I'll put it back in with another egg. About the work surface, I have quartz countertops. I use a kitchen cleaner on them. If you use the kitchen cleaner on your counters, that's fantastic. What you need to do is wipe them down again with soap and water and make sure you rinse it very well. You don't want any kind of chemical residue getting mixed in in your food. Nobody wants that. So. Okay, um, make sure your hands are clean because we're going in. <laughs> this is not as advertised. Not as advertised at all. That's okay because we're trying something new and sometimes it doesn't always work out. Um, if I need this by hand, then I'm getting my clump of dough and it's starting to come together a little bit more. So I think I probably should have done this before adding any water because now it's getting kind of sticky and that's not what it's supposed to do. So that's on me. Uh, shouldn't have added water. Should have just done the kneading and kept going um, until it's all incorporated. So anyway, it says do this for about two minutes to incorporate any loose bits and form a smooth dough. Okay, so it is starting to become smoother. Um, I didn't add much water. I'm glad I didn't go with my instincts to add a lot of water. My glasses keep sliding down. This is not a lot of dough. <laughs> like, this is not a lot. Um, okay. It is incorporated. It is almost smooth. I'm trying to kind of pick up some of the pieces that have come off. Um, oh. Okay. Gonna, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of flour here and try to try to get this to stop being so sticky. That worked. And it was just, you saw, it was just a teeny tiny amount of flour. You know, that's one of the things that I can't, I can't help you with, because I can't be there to see your dough, but you don't want it dry, you don't want it super sticky. There's a there's a nice in-between and all it takes is one tiny pinch of flour or a couple drops of water to go in either direction. Okay, now you got your dough. You're gonna kind of shape it into a ball. All right, and then you're gonna press this down. And you want this to be in a disc that is about one inch thick. Okay, a one inch thick disc so if you have one of those great kitchen rulers that I keep telling you about, this would be the time to break it out. I forgot to grab mine and my hands are a mess now. So that's, that's about an inch thick. Of course, some of it's on the counter now. Great. Once you have your dough in about a half or at about an inch thick round or disc, you're going to wrap it tightly in plastic wrap and then we're gonna make our filling, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go clean up and wrap this up. Okay, so for our filling, you are going to need two cups of ricotta cheese. That's about uh, 454 grams, 425, something like that. Hang on a minute while I take the lid off of this. 
grab my spatula. So you're gonna need a mixing bowl, okay. All of the ricotta cheese. And again, don't turn up your nose at my ingredients. Yes, it's Walmart brand because Walmart is the only store we have that I don't have to drive 40 minutes one way to get to. So you are also going to need a fourth of a cup of flour, all purpose flour there. You are going to need two tablespoons of fresh herbs. Now, I didn't get fresh herbs because I wasn't sure when I would be making this. Um, and the herb garden is not going yet. There's nothing harvestable. So I'm going with dried. And it's herbs of your choice. So I've got some basil, some oregano, some onion and garlic. Let's see. And I'm kind of sniffing everything. See, I'm just going to pour it. I'm sniffing everything. That was a lot. <laughs> I'm sniffing everything before I put it in so that I'll know if it's going to be if it's going to go together. I mean, obviously the onion and the garlic. I don't have to I don't have to smell that. I want to though. Okay, and then we just mix it up. Oh wait, we have more cheese. You're gonna need a half a cup and a tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese. And yeah, I'm using what we lovingly refer to as shaky cheese. Let me grab that out of the fridge. You use what you have in this household. What did I say? Half a cup. Half a cup and one tablespoon. Let me go grab my half a cup. Oh goodness. I am not prepared at all today. If all of my measuring cups would be in the same place. But they're not. All right. Half a cup grated Parmesan plus one tablespoon. So that is a lot of Parmesan. <laughs> Let's up against the counter. Goodness gracious. And I'll just mound it on top because there's my tablespoon. And a half a cup plus one tablespoon of grated Pecorino Romano cheese. I think this opening. There we go. And I'm using the Italian style blend because it has all of that and more. <laughs> and I really didn't want to sit here and grate. Um, Parmesan cheese. So that's way more than the recipe called for. Oh well, see me. I like cheese. Now we're going to mix this all up. And we also need a teaspoon of pepper. What else? And a fourth a teaspoon of salt. I am reluctantly adding the salt. I'm not a big fan of salt. And the pepper. That was probably too much pepper. You should measure yours. Don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. I always hated that growing up or like at any point in my life. But in this case, if you would like to make sure that your ravioli filling is edible, you should probably do as I say, not as I do. Um, because I don't know how this is going to go. It smells really good though. Give it a sniff test. I think mine could use some more basil. So this is where you just kind of adjust. Since I'm using dried herbs, it's not really taking up a lot of time or a lot of space. So it's not bulking things up. Yep, there we go. All right, there's my cheese mixture. You're gonna cover this and leave it sitting on the counter until we're ready for it. 
Before we start messing with our dough, you're gonna to wanna to prepare a baking sheet. Um, this is just a cookie sheet with some parchment paper, and you're gonna dust it lightly with flour. If you don't have one of these flour dusters, what are you even doing with your life? I mean, you could use your hands, but it's cheap, it's amazing. I've got the link below in the description. So prepare your baking sheet and then set it aside somewhere. Okay, let's do this. So you're gonna take your disc of dough and unwrap it. You want a knife, a bench scraper, a pizza cutter, whatever you have on hand, because we are only gonna work with half of this dough at a time. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, ah, save your plastic if you can, because you're gonna wrap up the other half. So divide this in half. Good enough. And I'm going to wrap the very, very skinny part up again. I really hate plastic wrap. And then just set that aside That's so that it doesn't dry out. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles in there. Okay. The goal is one-sixth. If you're using a pasta machine or a pasta attachment like I am, you're going to set it on the widest setting first. Okay? And we're just going to roll the dough through there. to fold it into thirds like a letter um, and then roll it through again. This is going to help it make that rectangle shape. If you're using a rolling pin, try your best to keep it in a rectangle shape, okay? You're going to want your ruler for that. You're going to want your pizza cutter. As you might have some that go like really far to one side, trim off the excess and put it somewhere where it might be dipped in a little, okay? All right, so if you're using a pasta roller, one more time through this setting. I think I need the, oh, you know what? It does say to kind of, there we go. Okay, <laughs> look Ma, I'm making pasta. Okay, and then it says to change it to the next lowest setting, which would be a two, and do it again. And we're gonna do this one time on each of these settings until we get it down to an eight, which is gonna be your one uh, point six, point six millimeters. Okay, dust the work surface to prevent it from sticking. It's kind of a little late for that, but let's see what I can do. Got my handy duster here. I'm gonna try to... Get it all over the floor while I'm at it. Okay. Oh no, it's stuck. It's stuck to itself, mostly. Um. Broke a little here and there. This is a really long piece of dough. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be. Give me a minute to unstick it and I will look at the recipe directions again. Oh, I may have absolutely messed this up because it is very much sticking to itself. Nope, I can pull it a little bit gently so I'm not ripping it. I really don't want to do all that again. Okay, here we go. All right, let me go grab my ruler and kind of see where we're at here. Because I guess when you're making ravioli, size matters. Okay. Oh, do, 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 do. 
It should measure four and three fourths wide. Mine is measuring a little extra wide. So I can absolutely trim this up some. Yeah, um, I'm gonna trim this up. Oof. You should be able to get 14 to 15 um, raviolis out of this. So I am going to measure this four and three fourths, right? That's what I said, yes, four and three fourths wide. It's gonna put me right about there. Um, and I'm just going to roll this up as I go. You're going to want to keep this little uh, edge piece, though, in case you need it. Um, if you're anything like me and you don't know what you're doing. Um, you know what? I'm going to get it in scraper because I want to get it set right on there. This is the part I'm stressing about. So, all right. And then I might just trim a little along this top edge. See, now I'm winging it because I'm frustrated. That's okay. That's okay, guys. It's okay. We're doing all right. Okay. Have my dough. Mostly some of it over here. You know what? I'm just going to cut it off here. If I get four... 14 or 15, great. If not, well, <laughs> I tried. But I can't work with more than what I got right now. I don't have the surface room um, because my stove is in the middle. Okay, starting on the left side, we are going to portion one tablespoon of our filling, a half of an inch, so you're gonna need your ruler, from the left edge and a half inch from the bottom edge. Basically, we're making a big row of raviolis and we're going to be folding it in half to cover the filling. So, here's my one tablespoon. It's going to be stringy because of my cheese. I should get a little spoon because that's going to stick in there. I love my itty bitty little teaspoons. I got them for when I have fancy tea on cold winter mornings, but these have been great. Okay, half an inch from the bottom is putting me right here. It did say a half an inch, right? Half inch from the left and half inch from the bottom. Okay, so my half inch is putting me right here and a half inch from the bottom is putting me right here. So that is where my filling is gonna go, basically right here, um, like that. <laughs> Okay, and then I think we want to do that every inch from there. Yes. So you're going to want to get a little more in there. So you're going to want to scoop and fill every inch from there. So I'm just going to put this down here, put it at the edge, and right here is going to be my filling. Making sure I've got one inch between fillings and don't get too crazy with your filling. I feel like um, if it heats too much, you're going to have an issue. Also make sure you're keeping it in line at the bottom. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing it from here. I'm going to move this down some. So you want it an inch apart because we're going to cut it with a half inch seam. You want to make sure that you're not getting down too far. I don't know if this is going to make a full 14 or not since I trimmed off a good two inches at the edge, but that's okay. I'm just gonna, we're doing our best and that's all we can do, right?
I think I'm gonna have so much filling left over. That's okay. I'll throw some of this cheese mixture in the sauce when I make sauce. Nice tomato cheese sauce. Absolutely looking forward to dinner tonight. All right, I'm getting close to the edge here. Let me move this bowl. Now listen, if you don't have enough, because you're going to want to make sure you have your half inch, and I do, I do have enough to do one more little ravioli over here. If you don't have enough to have a half inch from that edge, then just trim it off and use it, uh, incorporate it with the next one. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I somehow managed to get 15. That's exciting. All right, for this next part, you're gonna need some water. You can use your finger. If you're squeamish about it, you can use a pastry brush. We're gonna brush water along the edges and in between the filling. So let me get my water and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry if this is a little upside down. Um, this kitchen is not the best for filming videos. Okay, what we're gonna do now is you're gonna take your water and your finger and you're going to lightly brush water, cool, cold water, all along the bottom and the sides and in between your filling. This is going to help seal our pasta it's going to get it nice and sticky. And I'm trying to work quickly here. Um, I think probably using your fingertip is definitely going to be the best method for this. I feel like a pastry brush is going to get water all over the place and we don't, you don't want that because then your dough is going to get real sticky. Um, and if you're feeling like hard edges, like your dough is drying out, don't panic. Just don't panic because we're going to be boiling it and it'll be fine. Everything will be fine. The water is going to reconstitute and it's going to be fine. It's all going to be okay. All right. Now, now comes the not tricky part. Oh, right. You're going to brush all the way up on those edges because those edges have to seal themselves. Okay, now we're gonna fold the dough over onto itself. And we're pressing to seal, okay? I'm gonna fold it all down first. Um, if you need to squish your filling down a little bit, I think that's okay. I kinda did heaping tablespoons, which may not have been the right move. So I am kind of squishing mine down a little, trying to make sure it's not folding in on itself. And it was a little. Okay, and then I'm squishing this down. And remember, you wanna, you're wanna you supposed to start in the middle because you don't want air bubbles. So start in the middle. I'm pressing, I'm working it down, and then I'm sealing the bottom edge. Okay? And that, I can hear like some of the air coming out when I do that. So that's a good thing. Is that there's air like leaking out of here and it's making a squeal that's funny I'm trying to work quickly wow, I may have pushed those too close together I feel like they're spilling in there um okay almost done that one is gonna be questionable okay <laughs> It says to gently press, but I've had to press pretty hard to get mine to seal. And I still have a lot of air in there, so I don't know what that means for cooking. Um, I don't know if it's gonna stay sealed. That's okay, we're learning as we go, right? All right, now for this next part, if you have a fancy fluted pastry wheel, by all means, break it out. If you don't, 
a knife or a pizza cutter is going to work just as well. Okay, we are going to, hold on a minute, did I, hold, yep, lightly, okay, we're going to trim the bottom edge. Um, I'm going to do this in half though, because I have got not a big work surface here. So I'm going to move these, I think, maybe, if I can do it without undoing all of my work. Well, that's weird, but okay. Um, it says to trim the bottom edge. <laughs> Mine is very stuck. I probably should have added more flour to my work surface than I did, but nothing's ripping. So flip these over here. I'm kind of looking to see where my edge is and it's right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly trim right on the edge here. Um, if you have your fluted one, that's going to just make it pretty. That's just going to make it pretty. That's what that's going to do. And I'm going to flip this back over so I can see where my filling is. And I'm going to cut right in the center of each of these. I'm going to use my fingers to kind of press down to make sure I'm not cutting like on the filling. Oh my gosh, look at that. I have raviolis. That is awesome. Okay, I'm going to transfer these over. I'm kind of making sure that my edges are sealed. Um, I'm going to transfer these over to our baking dish and then we're going to make the second one. I absolutely forgot to film me putting these in. It's just boiling water, eight to 10 minutes. It says to flip to make sure it's even, but there's not really flipping. Some of them are on their sides. I put an entire batch in, so there's 14 in here. Um, it does look like I've got some spices uh, kind of floating in here. So that tells me that one of these, oh, this one right here popped open. Um, but the cheese is staying inside, so that's good. And Scott made a lovely sauce over here. So when the timer goes off, I will pull these out and put them in the plate. Toss with sauce, top with cheese, and that will be dinner. And then I'll let you know how it turned out. Okay, so there was a little hiccup in boiling them. Um, I followed the directions on King Arthur's website and that was not okay because half of my pastas burst open um, in the middle and <laughs> became pockets of water. Um, so these are not, these have no filling. I had to pick them up and dump water out. This is what's left out of the first batch. So Scott did some reading and he's going to try a little bit of a different method to boil these and I'm going to step out of the way and let him take over because I'm pretty frustrated. I, I shouldn't be frustrated because these hiccups happen and this is a learning experience and pasta is hard. Now I know I sealed mine all the way because they were completely sealed. I double checked them as I was putting them in the water. So um, we're going to try a little bit of a different method and um, I'm cool now. It's fine. It's fine. Listen, there's enough here to make a meal and that's hopefully it tastes good. So we're going to find that out soon. So we have some in the water and Scott made a concoction of olive oil and what do you have in there? Just black pepper and salt, sea salt. Some seasoning and we're going to try a few in the air fryer as well, just for giggles to see how it goes. Okay, I know this is not usually where I do taste tests at, but Scott's got the kitchen because um, he's working on the other batch. But I'm going to go ahead and try these because these did not explode. And I would like to know how they taste. So the inside looks like cheese ravioli. It smells really good. Sorry, I'm trying to cut like a small bite. Um, let's see. Okay, here goes nothing. Mmm. Oh, this is really good. 
the combination of the ravioli and the sauce that Scott made, this is definitely better than store-bought. This is like restaurant, this is like Italian restaurant quality um, cheese ravioli. <laughs> so this is really, really good. I, I like this a lot. Okay, Scott is a genius because look at these. We have a little bit of burst filling, but not so bad and it just smells like a fried cheese stick. But they look really neat and I cannot wait to try these. So Scott did shallower water and only flipped them once as opposed to the maniacal stirring that I was doing. He did have one that burst, but I think the rest turned out pretty good. Well, there you have it. We did three different ways of cooking this ravioli with some mixed results. The first one I did, I filled the pot with salted water, I boiled it, I put the pasta in, I stirred it several times, and half of the pasta leaked the filling out, the seals broke, it wasn't that great. What did turn out was fantastic, tasted great, absolutely loved it. Um, I got frustrated, Scott stepped in to help, and he boiled the next batch. He did a very small amount of water in the pan and flipped them only one time. He didn't stir, he just flipped them individually about halfway through for about nine minutes total. And then he got the fantastic idea to throw a handful in the air fryer about 325, two minutes on either side, so four to five minutes in the air fryer, and he loved those results. It was iffy for me. I thought they tasted really great, but the texture was not what I wanted from ravioli. So you know me in textures, it didn't quite work out. But I think it's a fantastic option for anyone that wants to go down that path. And I hope that you tried this recipe along with me, but I also understand if you didn't. It was involved, it was kind of messy, it took a while. I have read several times now that pasta is one of those things where practice makes perfect and you're not gonna get it right the first time or the second time or even the 10th time. It's very much a labor of love. I am going to make this recipe again. The flavor was fantastic. It was a little stressful. I had a little bit of anxiety, but I feel a lot calmer now knowing what to expect. And I'm gonna try it again. And I'm gonna experiment with fillings and with the different cooking techniques. And I hope that you do give it a try also. If you didn't, that's okay. This is my baking challenge. That doesn't mean it has to be yours. But if you wanna join in the fun next week, we're gonna make something that is a little sweeter and a little bit easier to make or so the instructions say. So if you wanna join in, hit that subscribe button below. You should also go over to our Facebook page. That link is in the description below and follow along there as well because every Wednesday morning, I will post the ingredient list. That way you can go get your shopping done if you would like to bake along with me. These videos will be posted on Saturday mornings between seven and nine o'clock in the morning. It really just depends how together I have my life um, that weekend. So it's kind of anybody's guess, but I hope I see you next weekend.